Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. Today we're going to be talking about searching a database in Wix. And this basically means that we're going to input some kind of search query over here, and then see our results here in a repeater based on a match between this query and one of the fields in the database. We're going to be talking about how to do this in two ways. So one, how you just saw right now, and the other to do it based on just a click of this search button. So if you're interested in learning how to query uh, and search your databases in Wix with Velo. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start by going over what we have set up here already. So you'll see that I have a basic text input and I have a button that says search. And over here, what I've done is I've set up a repeater and I have several text boxes just to populate with the data that we're gonna be getting uh, from our search. And the way we're going to be doing this is by querying a database using uh, Velo's uh, Wix data uh, query. And this will get the data based on certain specifications which we pass in, which will be essentially our search query. And we're going to be querying this database that I have set up over here, uh, which is the mock data database. And you can see here that I have several fields that we're going to be uh, essentially using to populate this repeater. So let's dive down into the code and discuss uh, how we're going to handle this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a function called search. Let's call this function search. And this is going to need to be an asynchronous function because we're going to be querying a database. So that's an asynchronous action. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a query. And this query is going to take this search query input. So I'm just going to first define that in a variable. So we have query equals to search query input dot value. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a const, uh, let's call it mock data query result. So the result that's going to come back from our query. And that's going to be a wait. And now we need to import Wix data. So I'm going to do that here at the top level. So import import Wix data. And here we're going to have Wix data dot query. And we're going to be querying the mock data data set. And this is going to be, if you want to check what it's called uh, in terms of the ID. So we can just go here into edit settings. And here you can see collection ID. So that's what we're going to be using for the query. Uh, and I just need to zoom out for a second just to close this for you. And okay, cancel. And we can go ahead and zoom right back in. Close this up. And here we're going to be querying that collection ID. And now we have here find. Okay, so if we were to run our query just like this, essentially it would get us all the items from that collection up to a certain limit. And now what we want to do is we want to kind of refine that query based on our search query input. So one thing that we could do here, for example, is to say, get rid of this. We could say dot contains, and then we specify a field. So let's say first name, and you can find the names of your fields over here. Let's go over here. These are the names of the fields. And we're going to specify that that field should contain the query. Okay, and you can find all of this in the documentation. So if you go over here into Wix data, and you go over here into query, uh, or even here into Wix data query, then you can find here all the different methods that you have with regard to a query. And what we're using here is the contains method. And this method basically says, does this field contain this value that I'm comparing it to in any form, uh, it doesn't have to be case sensitive. Okay, so if I was to run this query now, basically it would return any items where the first name contains the query here in the search. Okay, so that would be good if I was just searching by first name. But if I want to have a more robust search that can deal with several different uh, fields, so first name, last name, etc., what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the query into several queries and then combine them together using OR. And this is a good point to explain a bit about AND and OR. I think I have another video about it. Uh, but just to have a refresher, so basically AND is more restrictive knowledge and 
uh, more a more restrictive condition, sorry, and or is a less restrictive condition. So if I say this query, uh, let's find it here in the documentation. So if I say query one and query two, it means it has to match both of those. Okay, so it's more restrictive. If I say or, then it means I have to match one of them. And I'll show you now in the demonstration, I think it'll make it a lot more clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define several queries. So say const first name query. And this will be equal to Wix data dot query. Essentially this query that I have right over here. So I'm just going to copy it over. And I don't need the find part, okay? Because I'm just copying the query itself. The find actually executes the query, which is not what I want to do at this point. And we're going to use this same format to define several other queries. So I'm going to copy this over and just have a few more of these. And we're going to have the same thing for last name, query. We're going to have, let's see what else we have here in the computer. We're going to have email query. We're going to have car query. And we're going to have uh, ID query. And each one of these is going to be comparing a different field with the query. So this one will be uh, last name. This one will be email. This one will be car. And this one will be ID. And now basically what we want to do is we want to string all of these queries together using an OR condition. OK, so I'm going to say await. And then here, instead of what I have here, I'm going to say first name query dot or. And I can actually have this dot or over here dot or. And here I'm going to have last name query and then dot or and email query. And I can actually move these to new lines. OK, so just to make it a little more organized. Whoops. And we can have here dot or uh, car query. And dot or. ID query. OK, and then at the end, we want to run find. And basically what this is going to do, it's going to run a query where it's going to find any item where either this query is valid or 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 this query is valid. And basically that means that either their first name, last name, email, car or ID contain whatever I typed here up on top, whatever the query is going to be. OK, and then once we have our results, I can say const mock data is equal to mock data query results dot items. OK, whatever items come back from that. And then I can assign this to our repeater. So mock data repeater is what I called it. And then I'm going to say dot data is equal to mock data. And now what we need to do is we need to do a few things. So first, we're going to need to set up our repeater so that it knows how to handle this mock data when it's assigned to it. And I'm going to do this right over here. So I'm going to select the mock data repeater. And I'm going to say dot on item ready. And this is going to take two parameters. So the first is going to be the item selector. And the second is going to be item data, the actual data that's passed to each individual item. And now I need to set up each of these uh, selectors. So I'm going to say item, and for example, here, first name. OK. And I have a small typo here. I called it first name instead of first name. I can go ahead and fix that. So here, just change this ID. So this should be first name. And we can go ahead and change that over here. And then I'm going to say dot text is equal to item data dot first name. OK, because I'm passing in essentially an array of data here. Each um, item in the array is essentially an item from our mock data collection. And each of them will have these respective fields. OK, so first name. And then I say, OK, so this specific item in the repeater should display this field. I'm not going to go too much into it because I do have other videos uh, specifically about repeaters. And we can just copy this over. And we're going to use the same logic here for the other ones as well. Rid of that spaces. And here we're going to have last name. We're going to have email. We're going to have car. And we're going to have ID. And this is going to be equal to last name and email and car. And this ID is a little different because this is the actual ID 
of the item, so it's underscore ID. Okay, that's just a Wix thing. And that should govern how our repeater will be uh, populated once we assign new data to it. Okay, so every time we assign new data, this is going to run, essentially. And we just need to do one last thing, which is to tell our search button to run this function when it's clicked. So I'm going to add an on click event listener, and I'm going to run this search function. Okay, so that should be enough to do a basic search. And now I'm going to go into preview mode. And let's just try searching, let's say, for Bob. I'm going to go ahead and hit search. And we don't see anything at the moment because I forgot one key thing. So let me go back to the editor and uh, tell you about it. So you can see here that my repeater is collapsed, OK? Because I don't want it to show when there's actually no data inside. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just expand uh, the data re mock data repeater dot expand once we populate the data, OK? So that's a, that's a kind of a UI UX uh, choice there. Uh, so let's go ahead and search for Bob. And I'm going to search. And there we go. OK, so we see here there's two people with Bob in their name. Uh, but this is not restricted only to name. OK, so if I, or first name. Let's say if I search for Vol, OK, like for Volvo. So OK, so we have also Volkswagen in the, in the, um, in the car. I have people who have VOL in their email. OK, so there's uh, kind of different. Obviously, it's not very pretty, uh, but it's functional. OK, so it goes ahead and runs that query, and it runs it anew each time. OK, so that's the basic form of search. And I want to talk about one other option, uh, which is to essentially run the search every time we enter a new key, uh, a new character into the input. So we won't run it only when we click search, but kind of as we type. And the advantage of that is it's a slightly better user experience. Uh, you can kind of see the results being filtered as you type, uh, so it kind of leads the person searching on until they actually put in enough uh, information to find their result. Um, whereas search, you'll only run you know, kind of once you're done typing. Uh, the advantage of the button uh, is that it's uh, performance-wise, it only queries once. OK, so it's less expensive in terms of time and uh, just the, uh, the cost of querying, whatever it might be. So that is the kind of the advantages and disadvantages of each one. And I'm going to talk a bit about how to set up this second option now and how to make it somewhat, uh, you know, have somewhat good performance, even though it's slightly uh, more costly in terms of performance. Uh, so let's talk about how we're going to set that up. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to need to put an event listener for our input. So I'm going to select our input, um, search query input. And it's going to be dot on input. Okay, so every time somebody inputs something into there, so they type a new character, what we're going to do is we are going to essentially run this search function. But I don't want to run the search function immediately because then somebody, if somebody is typing very quickly, then it'll run the search multiple times. Let me show you that. So I'm going to say uh, I'm going to add a console uh, log over here. So console dot log mock data. So every time we run this function, essentially, we'll see all of our mock data. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run the search function every time on input. OK, just so you can see. So I'm going to go here into preview mode. And let's search. So I'm going to search Bob. And you see that it ran three times. OK, each time I inputted a key. But uh, since I typed so fast, essentially, I really only needed it to run when I finished typing out Bob. I didn't really need it to run for B O N B because I was in the process of typing out an entire word. So we're going to implement something called a throttle. And this throttle basically will only run the search if I've paused for a certain amount of time, which indicates that I'm ready for it to start searching. Uh, so let's set up that throttle. So what I'm going to do is say let throttle. OK, I'm going to just declare a variable here. And this throttle works with a timeout. So I'm going to say set timeout. And let's say it will run this timeout every half a second. Uh, sorry, the timeout uh, delay will be half a second. And this timeout will run this search function. OK, so at the moment, this timeout isn't really doing anything. It's kind of just delaying the doom. It'll still run three times, just at a delay of half a second. 
Uh, but if I assign, so I say here uh, throttle equals to set timeout. And sorry, this is my bad. I actually need to move this outside of this function. Okay, otherwise we'll be redeclaring throttle each time, which is not what I want. I want a global variable called throttle. Uh, if this was a large kind of uh, app, then I would move this throttle over here to the top level, right over here. But for now, it's fine. I just want to keep it close so you can see everything in the same place. And what I'm going to do essentially is I'm going to do something called clear timeout. And I'm going to pass in the name of the timeout here, the variable. And that means that what we're doing here is that each time that I input, I clear the throttle. So I say, OK, don't run this function anymore. Don't run this timeout anymore. And then we set the timeout again. So that means that if I input and then I wait half a second before my next input, then this search function will run. But if I'm typing quickly and it's within less than half a second, then the search will only run the last time. OK, and let me show you a demonstration of that now. So I'm going to type in here Bob very quickly. And you can see here that mock data only ran once. OK, the, the, the search query only ran once. And in terms of user experience, it was still pretty good. OK, let me try something else. Let me try V. OK, and then it ran O, L. OK, and then it ran again and again. OK, so you can see here that this throttle basically uh, makes this slightly less costly because I'm not running the query when I don't really need to. It's only when it's kind of in the user's interest to run that query. Uh, but we still get the experience of querying as we type, uh, if the person is typing slow enough. Uh, so that is the other option for setting up search. And that is all for today. So that is how you can create a search for your database uh, in Wix using some pretty simple uh, Velo code. Um, please let me know what you thought. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. There's new videos like this about Wix, Velo, and other cool stuff like AI um, every uh, week. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.